employment video series uh, that features young people working in different careers throughout the county of Middlesex at our local employers. It's a wonderful series. If you have an opportunity to visit the website, you'll find all of the videos that we produced on that site. Those are available throughout the school boards as well um, through a platform that we call Edge Factor, which is widely used for the careers courses throughout our area. Uh, the Workforce Development Partnership also attended and promoted several job fairs in the area, such as London and Area Job Fair, as well as Tem uh, we held one specific uh, to Thames Centre. Uh, employers over the course of the last year, and that proved very successful. We've purchased a new online platform just for uh, job fairs, and so that's now available to any employers throughout the area, or we can do specific uh, to geography uh, job fairs as well if one wanted to be done for, say, Middlesex Centre. Uh, we've also carried out successful Young Entrepreneur Business Plan Contest, and uh, the winners this year, you'll be happy to know, are actually a couple of sisters out of Middlesex Centre, and there they are pictured there. Um, we've also had a great partnership over the course of the last year with CTV Bell Media. If you have not seen the London and Area Works feature series that they do on the news each week, it's a wonderful series. And we've been very uh, in, engaged with CTV and they've been very interested in the stories throughout our municipalities this year with different employers. And so we've had features recently on Angels Daycare, Penta Equipment, White Crest Mushrooms and ADS Pipe. Uh, we are going to be a partner in that series again for 2022, and I would invite you at any point, if you feel like there's an interesting story um, to be heard, uh, Stuart Overhead Door from Middle Sex Center was also featured this year. Um, but if you have an interesting story for a local employer, please share it with me at any time. I'd be more than happy um, to take that information forward uh, to the newsroom. One of the other exciting projects we've had uh, in the works for a couple of years now uh, is working on community improvement plan development. And of course, Middlesex Centre was one of those uh, two municipalities uh, that had a CIP in place uh, for some time now. Uh, but uh, over the course of the last couple of years, we've been able to engage with your staff and we're very excited about the redevelopment of your CIP and the expansion of it uh, throughout your municipality. So I wanna commend your staff and your council for your foresight in doing that uh, project. And we're very excited to work with you not only on the development of that, but also over the course of the last year, we've been able to work with your staff on a new evaluation matrix for that program and as well are supporting that program with a new partnership um, uh, sponsorship program that we put in place in 2021. So very excited to do that. On the screen here, you'll see that we've also been working with a number of the other communities. Strathford Keredek was the one other community uh, that had a CIP in place prior to a couple of years ago. Uh, theirs had been in place for about 10 years. Uh, and they redeveloped similarly to Middlesex Center this year to evolve their program and we're excited about that. And then we're very excited as well to have worked together with Southwest Middlesex, North Middlesex and Luke and Bidolf to put in place CIPs over the course of the last 18 months. And Adelaide Metcalf is the last of that group uh, to de be developing theirs at present. So lots of movement on the CIP front and it's the pleasure of the county to be able to work together with all of the lower tiers to not only support that development, but as I say, moving forward to support the actual implementation of those CIPs as well. Uh, we also expanded our staff this year. And so here on screen, you'll see a picture of Ben Shantz. Ben is our full-time economic development officer. Ben hails from the London area. 
um, has a master's in uh, economic development uh, that he attained through the program in Waterloo and uh, had actually moved away into Manitoba at the height of uh, the pandemic uh, to work there as an economic development officer. And we're really pleased we were able to bring him back home uh, to work with our department. So Michael and uh, his staff have gotten to know uh, Ben over the course of the last few months that he has been with us. And uh, we'll continue to work together uh, with him uh, as uh, projects unfold. So in terms of local projects, lots going on, of course, and uh, as I say, we've been able to uh, ha have the pleasure of working together with your local staff as well. Um, but here's just a smattering of things that we have been working on to give you a little bit of insight into your own projects, but also those that we've been doing throughout the county. So uh, we've been working with Luke and Bedal, Strathford Caradoc and Southwest Middlesex on some very specific site selection proposals. We've conducted site selection tours in Strathford, Caradoc, and Southwest Middlesex. Uh, we've had a successful major industrial site selection uh, happen in both. Uh, Strathroy. Uh, the most recent to be announced is Goss Global, a manufacturer of auto parts from Mexico uh, that will be moving on to seven acres there. Uh, we also have another hundred acre uh, development uh, that is taking place in, Glen in Glencoe that is yet to be announced, but that was a very interesting one whereby we were not able to accommodate within the industrial park that existed there, but we were able to facilitate a private uh, land sale for 100 acres abutting the park. Um, so a very interesting one indeed. Uh, we've also been working together with your staff on your official plan review and doing the same with Strathroy Caradoc. We've been working with you uh, to create a community profile. That's one of Ben's projects he's been working with Michael on. Uh, we are aiding in a rebranding, uh, not only just the RFP, but now we've moved into the actual implementation with Southwest Middlesex. Uh, we're working with North Middlesex on a philanthropic investment into the local healthcare system. Uh, we've been working with all eight municipalities on uh, development of Main Street programming. Unfortunately, we weren't successful uh, in the applications to the most recent uh, Main Street application, but we're supporting a local effort of yours in Nilgerton as well. Um, we're in discussions with North and Middlesex regarding an industrial land assessment for them, um, but we've been working together with your staff on your industrial land analysis, as well as an FDI review, so that's exciting. Uh, and then we've collaborated uh, with Southwest Middlesex in the marketing of their industrial park as well. So lots of, of individual local projects that we're assisting and working alongside with. In terms of grants, um, as I said, uh, the Main Street funding was not successful, but uh, we were successful in acquiring two rounds of OMAFRA Red funding over the course of the last 18 months. And now we're working on a uh, third one uh, specific to our workforce development efforts. Uh, we also received funding from SWATC for projects like our business profile videos and our hands to table project. Uh, we've received funding from Can Export, uh, which is a federal grant to do uh, 30 meetings for lead generation, so specific to foreign direct investment. Um, we are we did receive FedDev Ontario funding uh, for tourism relief and recovery over the course of the last year, but we've also requested more funding going forward for the same. And uh, then we've also been able to create a tourism initiative sponsorship program. And so we've been looking and partnering on a great deal of local projects. Uh, ag strategy. So over the course of the last year, our ag agriculture strategy has included um, uh, sponsoring on the farm with foreman. If you haven't heard that series, uh, it's a great series on Bell Media's uh, radio stations that we're really happy with over the course of the last year. Uh, we also did a breakfast from the farm, which was presented in partnership with Farm and Food Care Ontario and the OFA. We did that at Western Fair. It featured local breakfast um, items and basically provided about 
uh, I think around $100 worth of items for people to take home to their families and make breakfast together, uh, featured all kinds of local things. And uh, we had almost 500 people come through that morning uh, to collect um, that food. Our From Our Hands to Your Table, if you're not familiar with this, you can check out handstotable.ca. This is a partnership that we launched together with SWATSI, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture, the Middlesex and uh, Lambton Federations, uh, Tourism Sarnia Lambton, uh, the Leonard Food Policy Council and Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership along with our office over the course of the last year. We're going to be launching another series of these videos uh, that we were able to produce, uh, luckily, in the last month and a half. And it's really about the inherent relationship that exists between local producers and culinary providers. So whether that be restaurants or caterers or other food service providers, um, the stories come from Middlesex County and Sarnia Lambton, and they're just lovely stories about building that relationship uh, with respect to local food. And so there is an entire web platform that's established for this, along with the video series, um, and I, I think you'd love to see it. So if you have a chance, um, handstotable.ca is the place to see that. Um, the London Chamber of Commerce this year, unfortunately, has decided to fold their AGRA business committee. However, they continue to offer AGRA business awards. And so I am a judge um, on that panel and again had chaired that committee for several years prior. Um, we also uh, decided to be a part of the CCMAs this past year, and we worked together with CTV and the Country Music Awards to put together uh, I, an event just prior to the CMAs for families because children were excluded from the CMAs this year due to the COVID restrictions. So we were able to put a family event together out on the streets, um, outside Bud Gardens, and provide copies of our culinary guides as well as other promotional materials uh, to those interested in local food. As you know, each year uh, we put together a series of profile videos and uh, this year, no different. The feature this year for Middlesex Centre was Cambridge Environmental Products uh, here out of Kilworth. Uh, wonderful companies uh, to work with. So appreciative, particularly through the pandemic times to be able to feature and talk about uh, these companies and the success and how they have modified uh, their work over the course of the last couple of years to adapt to the changing market and supply chains. So if you haven't seen the video, um, you can see that on investinmiddlesex.ca and we will be doing individual sponsored ads for each of these companies over the course of the year, uh, depending on their um, markets and uh, when they would like to see those happen. We also have a newsletter. So if you're not a member of receiving that, uh, it only comes out quarterly. It doesn't plug your inbox and you can receive that by going in on to invest in middlesex.ca and just hitting the button to sign up for the newsletter. We had a big year this year and we actually launched uh, two new websites as well. So we completely overhauled uh, both our Invest in Middlesex website and the Visit Middlesex website. So some brand new features on there, um, some exciting new uh, trends, obviously, and just looking at uh, different schemes to bring our technology up to date. It had been five years since we had done these. Um, so if you haven't been on the sites as of late, now's a great time to check them out as they're all redone. As I noted, we also launched our Tourism Initiative Sponsorship Program. This really was our opportunity to continue the efforts of the Tourism Relief and Recovery Fund, uh, but on a local scale and allow us the opportunity to partner with some of our local tourism off creators and offers in terms of what they wanted to do to spawn continued tourism and attraction throughout our communities. So some examples of the different projects are there. Um, however, I'll make some special note of the Ilderton and the Area Business Association Outdoor Christmas Markets. 
um, as well as we did quite a bit of work with the Komoka market over the course of the last couple of years as well. But some different examples there of some projects. This is not exclusive and we are going to be continuing this program into 2022 as well. So we're excited to partner with others. Uh, we've also been really involved in our department in our Middlesex County Connect program. So this is our transportation program, which we have running uh, in Thames Centre as a pilot project into the City of London uh, and also into Oxford County. So our department has uh, taken more of a supervisory role to assist with this project over the course of the last year. And we've been involved in the transportation needs assessment survey, a promotional video, informational brochures, etc. Uh, I'm excited to tell you that we do have a proposal in for additional funding to also do a needs assessment throughout the county with respects to transportation and of course we're well aware of the program that currently exists and runs uh, the buses into the Kamoka area uh, through Strathroy and into the City of London and we're continuing talks with the City of London transportation networks as well as those networks and projects taking place throughout the region to see what the future holds for public transportation in our area. As I said, we uh, it has been a year of challenge, but also a, a year of celebration uh, for us in terms of being able to promote many of our businesses. And so a big part of our work has been in promotion and looking at a number of social media contests, which a great number of our local businesses in Middlesex Centre have been a part of. We're so pleased to have been able to work with them and continue to work with them as time goes on to feature all of the good work that they're doing. Our most latest contest was actually a reverse contest in effect. Um, it was to appreciate the businesses that were doing great things over the course of the pandemic very successful, hundreds of people uh, actually took time to do surveys for that and to appreciate our businesses. And so a wonderful opportunity for us to give something back to them uh, in exchange for them having done so much with us throughout the year. So despite the pandemic, uh, masks on and uh, social distancing when required, uh, we were out to a number of events throughout um, the year and so you'll see the Kamoka and Elderton markets name there as well as many others that we were able to be a part of and we were also able to bring in an intern to work with us full time over the course of the summer to extend some of our efforts in social media and creative writing and getting out to these events as well. Uh, and then we have general advertising, of course, so you may have seen many of these in terms of villager publications. Um, Media city billboards, you'll see us on uh, uh, the rink boards at the local arenas and things like that, uh, community guides, filmmaker guides, and then the list goes on as we are involved and engaged in advertising for a variety of reasons, not just uh, for promotion of local tourism, but also regional tourism, and then uh, the efforts that we put into attracting investment uh, into our business parks and other industrial sites uh, is done throughout the world and uh, both with partners and our, on our own. Uh, we also decided to update our publication uh, for tourism locally. Uh, that's our Discover Our Grassroots map. And so these new maps are available as well um, and uh, can be facilitated throughout your offices or any of our tourism kiosks that we have throughout the county. We have about nine sites now, uh, mostly in our comprehensive library systems, but in uh, some cases where those don't exist, uh, we have them in the municipal offices as well. We've also been conducting, as usual, um, photography and videography on the general scale throughout the year. And any of our photography and videography, if we do anything in Middlesex Centre, particularly, we will have that available. Staff are always welcome to ask us uh, to utilize our galleries and videos uh, for any of their works as well. And uh, the companies that we feature also receive um, all of that material to use as well. 
And in exciting news, we are now putting uh, our satellite offices for our department uh, into the Wellness Center in Kamoka. So as of January 1, I'm sure Council is well aware um, that we have signed a lease agreement. And we'd like to thank Council as well as your staff. Michael and Justin have been phenomenal in working with us. Uh, we will have the two small offices at the top of the stairs in the Wellness Center when we're able to return to the office on a more permanent basis. Uh, we will have those sites there. We will have staff there on a daily basis um, to not only deal with our usual business, but also to provide a bit more of a tourism opportunity for people to gather information. So you will see that we are going to put an additional tourism um, resource um, rack uh, there as well. We do have one in the library, but of course the hours are more limited in the library, so we will have that information readily available. So I just want to again reiterate our thanks to your staff for not only working with us together on um, some of the local projects and of course on this office, but in general for just being tremendous supports uh, with us in our resiliency task force uh, and also also the culmination of our economic development strategic plan. Um, so again, uh, tremendous thanks to everyone. Thank you for the support of Council. It has been a uh, challenging time uh, for economic development and tourism, as everyone can attest to, but we've done a great deal of work and we're very, very grateful uh, for all that has been accomplished and for um, the tenacity of our business owners. So we've been very lucky to see very few, if any, closures directly related to COVID-19 over the course of the last two years. And uh, we really very much look forward to the future and evolution of our economy. If there are any questions at all, I am more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Kara. I'll look to Council then. Are there questions, comments, input? I can't see everybody. Just a second here. I don't see any hands. Speak up if, oh, I did something here. Change my new full screen. Here we go. I think that was me. I was okay. still sharing, so I've been able to. All right. Get back to see all everyone. Okay. I don't see any hands. Um, Alec is, wow, Kara, this is just the best presentation. I, I find there's always um, a lot of content. Um, to say it's a multi-pronged approach is an understatement, I think. It's, 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 um, it's very comprehensive and, and all the different initiatives and, and different sectors and players that you're involving is um, amazing. So um, I, I just wanna thank you for bringing us up to speed because there is a lot to know. I have a ton of questions too, but I mean, that is probably best taken offline. Um, so I wanna thank you for all of the work that you're doing and the support that you're providing to our municipality and the people who live and work here. Um, I think it's uh, great stuff. And I think there's a lot more that's going to happen that's exciting when the world returns to more normal. So, oh, and I'd also, also like, also like to say welcome it'll be good to have um, to have a physical presence in our community I think that'll that'll be uh, appreciated I think word will spread too but what you do more maybe I don't think people realize all of the things that you touch actually they see things on the news or they see this there so um, again appreciate your time and all of your updates and uh, we'll look forward to next time thank you so much I mean we are a small but mighty group but uh, we do try and do um, what we can and we just invite anyone at any time if you have questions the door is always open Alrighty. well and happy new year to you and your team happy new year Alrighty. okay um oh the next thing is so much less exciting uh, we're looking at the adoption of the minutes <laughs> um the uh, motion before us is that the minutes of Middlesex center council meeting held on december 15th 2021 be adopted as printed if I could have a mover, please, and a seconder. Councillor Cates, Councillor Scott, any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried then, thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, these are the items that are listed, uh, considered as routine, but uh, may require discussion in some um, cases. 
but there, no, no action is required from council. We have uh, five items. Is there anything here that anyone would want to pull out for comment or question before we um, hear the motion? I don't see anyone. Okay, in that case, the motion before us is that the Council for the Municipality of Middlesex Centre receives the consent agenda item 6.1 through 6.5 for information. A mover, please, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Heffernan and Councillor Shipley, uh, any opposed? Seeing none, then that is carried. We can now move on to staff reports then. Uh, the first item up is the um, official plan update. Uh, our CAO, Michael DeLulo, is going to provide an overview of the report. Uh, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to the Mayor and members of Council, uh, the purpose of this report is to now um, provide an overview of the official plan of where we're at in this project. And the report highlights how we can now uh, bring this project to conclusion. Uh, but in order to do so, it's important that uh, we now have council provide direction and information that we can collect as staff to forward on to the consultant. Uh, the project initially was commenced in uh, last year in around 2020 and, or 2020 and then on hold with the pandemic. So we restarted in 2021 and we spent all of last year doing extensive engagement, public meetings, speaking to proponents and prospective developers. And so uh, information has all been posted to the municipal website with the re initial report findings, but now is an opportunity for council to now weigh in and provide their thoughts and where they wanna see the municipality grow. And with the intent that this will be collected as summarized and provided to the consultants so that they can refine the final reports and that we can then bring that back for final adoption and get that to the county for approval uh, in the next couple of months. Okay, thank you for that um, overview. Um, do we want to hear from Matt first then? I think so. Yeah, is he on the line? He is on the line. Good, okay. Uh, we have Matt Campbell who has registered to speak um, to the application. We'll hear from um, Matt first and then I'll turn to council. Did we lose him? Oh, we still got him on the line here. We're uh, attempting to promote him. I'm just wondering if you maybe step away from his computer for a moment. But we'll give her just one more minute here. Yeah. Okay. Oops. We're not seeing any uh, response from Matt on this one, so we can. Okay, we'll move forward then. Okay, well, um, I don't really have a horseshoe. I've got. Oh, I just saw him pop up. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> what we should have done in the first place. Okay. Okay. Do you know is it a telephone? Will we have a visual or not? Pardon? Can you tell us if telephone or is it? A... It is a computer. It's, it's a, computer. a computer. Okay. Yeah. So it's should a visual. Okay. Just. We can yeah, attempt to move forward to the round table. I okay. From that, I will let the team know. Okay. Oh, I see a picture now. <laughs> Matt, can you hear us? Mayor, Mayor David, can you hear me there? 
We can. Already. Wonderful. Sorry, there was a bit of a technical issue there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually not uh, speaking to the official plan. I'm speaking to um, the uh, other item, the Kamoka Road item, uh, item 7.2. Oh, okay. Well, I'm so okay. Um, we'll come back to you then. We This might take a bit, but uh, we are going to go through the official plan piece first then. No worries. Happy to be on standby. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that technical issue there. Not at all. Okay, so I'm going to want to hear from every ward councillor here, every everybody around the horseshoe. Um, is there somebody who wants to kick things off then? Okay, Councillor Scott, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and good morning to everyone. Um, so anyway, I know that uh, we're talking about the official plan. And um, I, I want to speak specifically about my thoughts for Delaware. And um, um, I think what we saw with the official plan that came out, uh, there was no movement or nothing that was going on. And we did a lot of talking about the chicken and the egg. And so um, Delaware has been really in limbo since 2008. Uh, we've noticed that the official plan's kind of been uh, the same the last couple of times. And right now in Delaware, there isn't a house for sale that I can think of right now that's available. So there's, there's definitely no opportunity for anybody to come here, anybody to move back into the area. And uh, what we're finding too, is a lot of kids that grew up in Delaware are looking for a place to come back home. And, and that's not unusual, I don't think. So uh, anyway, I would like to encourage uh, our consultants to take another look at Delaware, the boundary areas and, and, and and let's explore expanding the area for this official plan. Uh, I know it's been talked about in the last um, public meeting that we should let this go for another five years. But <clears throat> as I mentioned, this is, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, this has been uh, been on hold for since at least 2008. Uh, Delaware, as you all know, borders right on the 402 and the 401. I think we got a perfect opportunity to uh, to create a nice uh, small town similar to you know what I think we've done in Ilderton. I think they've you know it's a good job there. Kamoka and Kilworth seems to be rolling uh, well with what it's got going on. Uh, Delaware, we're missing a couple uh, missing links here to uh, to make it move forward and expand. Um, I know we talked about some employment lands that were discussed possibly for over in the uh, 401 402 area, and uh, I, I think it's a real opportunity. So if I could, without going on too far, I, I'd like to, um, I'd like to uh, ask that we uh, reconsider Delaware uh, to the consultants and uh, would love an opportunity for us all actually to look at squaring up the boundaries, adding some areas that uh, we've got some interested folks in. I know we reached out to everybody in the last official plan, or last official plan to see what lands could be included in, you know, in the past we came up with uh, we, there's no need right now, but in Delaware, we got a particular position that we, we I think we, in order to get commitment from our, uh, our fellows that want to invest, we need to show them that we're serious about moving Delaware forward. And so uh, anyway, I think that pretty much will wrap up what I'd like to say. So if, uh, if somebody else wants to go, that would be great. Uh, perfect. Uh, thank you very much for starting things off, Councillor. Um, Next up, we have Councillor Heffernan. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Thanks to the mayor. Um, so I did some scratching and so I've tried to type it out. So if it doesn't make sense, it's because I couldn't read my own writing. So anyway, so for Fort Ward one, um, the PPS, the county and the Middlesex official plans all indicate a need to protect agricultural land. Agricultural land is finite and cannot be recovered. In the Elderton area, three to 400 acres of actively farmed land has been given over to residential development. The population in the past 20 to 25 years has increased almost tenfold from 300 residents to close to 3000. Um, there's been a lot of growth, but most of it, uh, at least presently, is not affordable. And we are starting to diversify, but um, so that's coming. Um, the PPS, County and Middlesex Center 
also or all support desired growth in fully serviced urban settlement areas of which Ilderton is one of two within the municipality. I'm not sure that the Oxbow Creek or drain is capable of handling more effluent flowing through the sewage treatment plant. As I have learned, any future expansions may require an environmental assessment, which indicates to me a question of further expansion to start with. As well, we need to be cognizant of climate change. There has been a lot of rain in the past few years and development has put pressure on our stormwater systems as well as our sump pumps. Um, quoting from uh, Mr. DeVos's report earlier, hard services such as pavement and eaves troughs versus grass or crop land uh, that absorbs water have created the need for stormwater charges to handle all the excess water. Um, this is not unique to Ilderton, this is for any um, developments. There are two subdivisions to be built out as well as approval for a seniors townhouse complex on George Street. Um, and there are still the odd infill lots. In summary for residential growth, I believe we are at a reasonable size and, uh, and doing our share in the municipality. And we will continue to grow over the next five years or so, at least as current approvals are built out. Need for commercial growth. I do have a small but vi vibrant downtown. And we hear that our residents would like to see more. There are gaps along Main Street that could be developed for commercial use. I believe this would be this should be our focus going forward. As well, there are settlement employment areas to the south of the fire hall and church on Hyde Park. These areas could be actively promoted for larger commercial or light industrial businesses. These businesses would access Hyde Park, which might work better than turning onto our main street. There are very little employment opportunities in Ilderton at the present time. The economy of the area is based on agriculture. While all our residents will never be employed in Ilderton itself, perhaps now is the time to support agriculture related industries, as well as others to reduce commuter traffic to London and other areas. We need to increase our employment opportunities. Um, other than Ilderton, Denfield and Bryanston are currently infilling their settlement boundaries. There is also room for some commercial infill in Denfield in the form of a variety store, which used to be there. And I believe that Burr has reached its maximum growth. So that's pretty much it for Ward 1. Outside of Ward 1, Middlesex Centre has already designated Arva for growth, pending an uh, environmental assessment to build a sewage treatment plant or continue to work with London. While Arva is right up against the boundary with London, it is heartbreaking to see the urban sprawl along Sunningdale Road, which has developed over so many acres of farmland. Other than the current settlement boundaries, I feel that Arva has grown enough without being absorbed into London. Kamoka Kilworth has been designated as a growth area for some time. It is fully serviced and many businesses, both commercial and light industry, have sprung up along Glendon Drive, which directly connects to London and access to Highway 402. There are yet a lot of infill residential opportunities, as well as existing residential developments that would take care of growth expansion within its boundaries for the next several years. There are many opportunities in Delaware, as Councillor uh, Scott mentioned, for commercial and industrial growth. In particular. Highway 401 and 402, making it the opportune location for business growth. Main holdback for both residential and industrial growth at this time is the lack of sanitary services. This is an expensive undertaking. Both water and wastewater services are not cheap in Middlesex Centre, as we know. However, if we want to expand and grow our industrial base, which provides more taxes and more employment opportunities, the Millsex Centre needs to work with partners to provide these services and to grow that employment area. That's all I have for now. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, and Councillor Shipley, you're up next then, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As the Councillor of Ward 2, my areas include the community settlement of Arba and the Hamilton of Bellingham, Bryanston and Melrose. I am recommending that the existing settlement boundaries in this ward remain as they are now and continue with infilling in these areas. 
We're losing good farmland as an average of 175 acres a day. And in my opinion, now is the time an official plan review to take taking place to do what we can do to, to stop the loss of farmland. Hamilton just recently turned down a proposal to designate 3,000 acres for development. Also in the Globe and Mail approximately a week ago, the Mississauga mayor stated, and I quote, that growth should pay for growth, but ultimately growth does not pay for growth, unquote. After being on the budget committee for two years, now I believe that statement is 100% true. It's fine to say development charges will pay for water and stormwater infrastructure, wastewater treatment plants, added trucks and equipment, just to name a few, when new development occurs. However, when it comes time to replace all of these items down the road, it's the taxpayer of Middlesex Center footing the bill. Therefore, the term growth should pay for growth realistically should probably read, growth is now paying for equipment upgrades and repairs of previous growth. Delaware has been promised growth for quite some time now and has not happened. In my opinion, that's where some commercial industrial businesses should be located and probably the main reason for that is access to the 401 402 corridor. As we are required to provide land for growth in the future, according to the provincial policy statement, this will ultimately take farmland to do this. If we're going to lose good farmland, if we're going to lose good farmland, let's make it work in the favor of Middlesex Center taxpayers. The reason for this is that the tax base, tax base is higher for commercial and industrial development than it is for homes. So hopefully this will ease some of the tax burden on our residents. As development is probably going to happen west of Arba in the original Hamlet boundary, I am recommending that no development or any future expansion areas east of Arba be included in this official plan. I am recommending that the future expansion area east of Arba be moved to the Delaware area. Thank you, Madam Mayor. All right, thank you, Councillor Shipley. I see Councillor Arts waving his hand. The floor is yours. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, through your, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the previous three councillors, uh, Councillor Scott, Hefferman, and Shipley, I agree with everything they said. What I'm about to say will probably be redundant, but I'll, I'll say it anyways. I'm in Ward 3, and the only settlement, the hamlet we have is Poplar Hill, Coal Stream, and it, it's not going to expand. It's, there's no uh, water or sewer, so there'll be some small infilling, and that's all I recommend for that. And then there's also the hamlets of Ballymont, Burr, Danfield, Lobo, and Melrose. I do not recommend expanding their boundaries either. Then there's the hamlet of Bryanston, which is kind of goofed up. There's been houses that aren't in the boundary that should be. And my recommendation is those houses get put in the boundary and then that's it. None of this leapfrog and all that side of the road is farther than my side of the road. So we can add some more houses. That, that's over. That's it. Uh, then we go to Illerton. I don't recommend it expanding either. As Councillor Hefferman said, there's an agricultural area and there's the question of if the sewage treatment plant can put any more water into the system due to the environment regulations. And also there is some uh, stormwater issues that need to be addressed, like fill it in and see what happens. But I, I recommend that's that for that. And as Arva goes, I agree with Councillor Shipley, no expansion east of Rich Richmond Street. And we still have to see the viability of putting a pollution plant there for the development that may occur or not. And being on the budget committee, I agree that just because people say growth is a good idea, that doesn't mean it's a monetary good idea. So that really has to be looked at. Uh, Kamoka, same story there, fill in what we got. There's nothing worse than expanding boundaries when you haven't built the center in yet. That, that's very expensive and doesn't make a good use of the facilities that we have. And as Delaware goes, when this process started, I said it was, I agreed with Councillor Scott, it was time to uh, address the issues in Delaware. It's been sort of pushed to the side for too long. I think in this official plan, that's where our residential, industrial and commercial growth should occur. And also in our official plan, we are reviewing the surplus farm residences because there was enough holes in that policy, you could drive a bus through it. So I'm gonna make for sure that that policy is much better this time around too. Thank you. And thank you Ms., um, for your comments, Councillor Arts. Uh, Councillor Cates. Oops. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, I too have a lot of notes here, so maybe in no particular order. Um, I agree with everything that everybody else is saying as well, and to skip ahead, uh, I support what uh, Councillor Scott is saying about uh, it's time to go to Delaware. Um, it keeps getting put off and put off for many years, and I don't think that we should let it happen again. Um, so I support that as well and support the uh, employment uh, uh, growth around the 402, 401 area there. Um, to add to, uh, to add off of that, uh, one of the things that I wanted to say in reviewing the settlement area maps for Kamoka Kilworth is that in order to apply some employment lands to Delaware, strategic employment lands, I would prefer that they stay, what we have in Kamoka stays where they are, and that they, if they have to take from somewhere, that they take them from Ilderton and not, uh, not from Kamoka. Um, and then, um, Okay, is that uh, so? Then um, you know, in in reviewing, I had a lot of notes from all the process and all of this, and in reviewing everything, um, you know, just to sort of say it out loud for uh, people to note the Kamoka from the report, Kamoka Kilworth will continue to be the primary settlement area, experiencing growth, and is expected to grow from sixty one hundred residents. Uh, in 2021 to 15,800 residents by 2046. So that's 2.6% growth. So, um, you know, there's there's going to be lots going on over the uh, next years. Um, one of the one of the things that I'm uh, curious slash wondering, or maybe we look at is um, in this same paragraph in the WSP report, um, uh, policy direction and recommendation report, it says uh, that about 16% of growth in Middlesex Center will be high density, example, apartments. So we've got high density tied to apartments and 20% will be medium density housing, i.e. townhouses and units in duplex. So one of my thoughts here, I, this often comes up from people, um, well, what is low density? What does low density fall under? So that's a question that I have. Um, and on the mapping, there is no low density designation. There's only, actually, there's only medium density, I believe. I can only see part of it here on my on my screen. And so I just wondered about the the definition of high. You know, our next item on the agenda is for apartment buildings, but they're falling under medium density and not high density. Uh, as is stated here. So I think that there's a need for some clarification because with the amount of growth that obviously is gonna be coming and a lot of it is gonna be uh, high density is uh, we need to know that that's very specifically defined. Um, so um, in the... Um, uh, so as far as the boundaries go, I think that uh, the Kilworth in look again, looking at the mapping from the from the report, uh, Schedule A8 for Kilworth Urban, Urban Settlement. Um, I think that everything there is fine. I just see one little housekeeping issue is the um, the Dosset condo and uh, Earl's Court or Peregrine there. Uh, part of that is still colored as settlement commercial when it's actually already built up as condominiums and, and houses along there. So just a little housekeeping um, item for the Kilworth. For the Kamoka, um, again, to keep the employment lands there, uh, a strategic employment, um, at least along the outer edge, uh, by Amians and um, and in you know really closely looking at this map and I I thought about it as you're driving down 
from the 402 and you're driving through to Kamoka. Uh, so, you know, you get off the 402 and right there, you've got some strategic employment lands. And so that would be good access from the 402 for an opportunity for some business along there. And then in, in continuing to drive, uh, you know, to uh, past, we've got the gas station and Tim Hortons, et cetera, that commercial along there. On the, the left-hand side side of the road or the north side, it's uh, you know set here on the on this map for some small for some commercial as well. And so then it made me think um, perhaps uh, what's known you know is the new bigging property, the red boundary line goes straight across Glendon. So you only have opportunity on the um, left side of the road in this particular spot where you have uh, both sides of the road in other places. So I am wondering slash suggesting that we have a very slight boundary adjustment to move the red line from Glendon Drive and move it south perhaps to the edge of the Kilworth Park, uh, just to allow a little bit of potential opportunity along there. Maybe there'll need to be some EA studies, et cetera. But there already is like the, the aqua golf and there's a massage. There already is some commercial there. And actually on the map, it is shown as part of the park. So I think that maybe there's a, uh, couple overlays that need to be looked at on that for what's happening versus what the overlay shows. Um, and then, of course, right beside that, the, um, the parkland is actually in the boundary and it should probably be removed from the boundary. Um, and so and then we have, you know, the, the next item, which is up on the agenda. Uh, but anyways, it, again, it's got some parkland and and uh, um, so I just wondered about some parks and rec where there is actually some things already going on. Um, so that's kind of my boundary bit of housekeeping that uh, uh, we've are in the overlay. We've talked about the low density, the high low density. I think we need to be very specific on, on what that involves. Um, um, I, a part of me wonders about the overall numbers. I've said this before, you know, there is, uh, there is some information in these presentations that shows, um, oh, I don't have that here in front of me. I'm gonna go off the top of my head. 6,500, 6,500 uh, new residents, but there's, already 4,600 in the queue, uh, it only leaves, I uh, apologize, so prepared and now I'm missing one page. Here it is. It only leaves 2,150 for future. Um, and so it's, you know, for future for 20 years is a very long time, which then brings me to the question of, um, we talk in here about um, 2046, 20 years and numbers of 20, uh, you know, 20 years, but um, we talk about in five years, in five years, in five years. So, but when we look back to what we're doing today, um, it actually didn't happen. It, 10 years ago is when it happened. So, I have a small bit of concern that are the numbers too conservative uh, for when we, in reality, will look at this again. Um, is it five years? Will it be 10 like it is now, which actually it's going to be 11 years? So uh, that's, I wanted to raise that, um, that point of when, when will it be looked at again to make sure that, you know, you haven't been too conservative uh, right now for how long it's going to take for it to happen the next time. Um, I was going to bring up the uh, with those numbers that I mentioned. I mean, right now we're uh, at the con probably a conservative number of 270 permits a year uh, times five years. That's 1,350 in in a five year period. 
uh, for Middlesex Centre. Um, I think that that I think that that is everything that I wanted to say. And again, just to reiterate, I support the uh, the big shift for us to move to Delaware. Um, I think that it's time and and it's it's well past time. And again, in what I say about how long is it going to take to do this again, I don't think that we can put it off again for uh, for Delaware. Uh, when we look at the the growth and the location of Kamoka Kilworth, uh, you know, Delaware sort of has that same location and even more benefit because of the 401 and the 402. Uh, and so it would be nice to bring some big business along there. There's a lot of opportunity. I think that's everything. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. Thank you very much, Councillor Cates. Um, Deputy Mayor Brennan, do you want to weigh in? Sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll start with Ward 1. Uh, the Arab area, I, I agree with Councilor Shipley. I don't think we should be going east. Um, I think we have a fair amount of land within the, the urban center there now. And there's some opportunities to uh, infill that and uh, do it right and perhaps bring some, some small businesses into that area. So. I agree with Councilor Shipley. I don't think we should expand the Arb area at all. I think what we have there now is sufficient. Um, Debbie's area in Ward 2, or ward, uh, actually Shipley's is Ward, uh, uh, Debbie's Ward, we have that land to the south. Uh, the university owns 800 acres there and across the road. Uh, those are, are areas that, uh, in the center of Billerton, are areas that we can concentrate on. And, and uh, I know staff's working with the people that own those lands to try to bring something exciting and commercially based um, to the area. So uh, I know that's ongoing and I think that's a good thing. Uh, Hughes area, uh, yeah, there's not a lot there to, to grow. Uh, uh, the province keeps saying that if you're gonna develop uh, you know, uh, large residential areas that it has to be on full services there are no services there, so I think it would be extremely difficult for the amount of development that could happen there to provide the services and make it cost effective. So um, as far as Sioux's area goes, um, there's a lot of infilling to go on there, and uh, there is some opportunity for some employment lands there. And uh, I think that needs to be our concentration is uh, on employment lands and commercial industrial. Brad, 100% uh, agree. Uh, Delaware's time is now uh, with its uh, location for the 401 and 402. We just heard from Kara Finn where uh, Southwest has got 100 acres going to be developed into a commercial site, a large commercial site. Strathroy just got, um, managed to get a business out of Mexico to come to their area. Uh, with our location of Delaware to the 400 series highways to the the um, City of London, um, <clears throat> we've got to jump all over this. I think it's time we, we spend the money, do what we have to do. Let's get Delaware going. Let's get some lands there for employment and commercial, industrial, which will obviously help the tax base. So I think Delaware needs to be our focus. I think that's where we need to expand uh, things and uh, leave the small areas alone leave Delaware, uh, Illerton and Kamoka Kilworth to do the infilling that's there now. So uh, my preference is Delaware definitely and let's, let's uh, attract and, and look at doing something there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Brennan. Uh, good comments, everyone. I, um, I hear all the, the questions and comments and ideas uh, as we work through all the, the supporting documents. and. I'm just gonna weigh in as you did too. I'll start um, with uh, Councillor Arts Ward, probably because it's the simplest. I agree with um, what I've been hearing and I support the um, hamlets that are not serviced um, are really not areas that we want to focus on. Uh, the, provincial, the provincial guidelines are quite clear there. And we already know from comments from residents over the years um, that, our, our costs of water and, and supplying um, services 
is often identified as being outrageously expensive. And that's a function of leveraging our infrastructure. So everything all of the councillors have said so far in terms of focusing growth on areas where we already have infrastructure or it makes sense to expand the infrastructure, that's where we're going to get the bang for the dollar on, on each of those uh, projects spreading out, out across the county in areas that are not serviced and, and, and trying to do something out there is, is not logical um, on any level. Um, as far as um, the RV area, we have our lands there um, that are undeveloped and that are, are thought are being, are being considered now. Um, again, I think in filling what we have and concentrating on those pieces, um, we also have the infrastructure question there, which needs to be answered. I think it was, um, I don't remember, I think it was Councillor Shipley that mentioned that. So we need to do our studies and finish off what we've got there and um, move to the West and get that done. Uh, I agree again with Councillor Heffernan as well. We've got infills in the Hem, um, sorry, infills in the um, Elderton area, areas that need to be finished. And um, again, we have the affordable housing question and, and making sure that we have diversified uh, housing stock in, uh, in that area as well. Uh, the commercial area, as you pointed out, uh, Councillor, is, is also something that we need to consider there. And um, Sam, I'm, I'm just sort of repeating things because I, I agree with what I'm hearing from all of you so far. Um, with respect to the Kamoka Kilworth area, um, the province is quite clear in terms of um, intensifying our, our house, um, housing supplies, uh, using land effectively. Again, uh, the impact on our use of infrastructure is, um, is a good, good use of infrastructure to have that uh, intensification diversified uh, land use. Um, we want to make sure that the primary settlement areas offer opportunities for all kinds of families. For, for both Delaware and Kamoka, I think of this in terms of, um, we talk about people want to work, live and play in, in their communities. We're working on that. We can do better at it. The work piece has been neglected to a large extent. Um, increasingly, we do hear from residents um, questions about, well, what about this kind of service or that kind of store or this kind of um, enterprise? Um, those opportunities to have an integrated uh, community happen when we think about how we're going to do things in order. And then now focusing on making sure we get that commercial piece, the industrial or the employment lands developed, um, that will give residents more opportunity to actually work in their, in their home communities. And having opportunities to work closer to home, I think is something that a lot of people have been thinking about through COVID. Working at home is another I mean, option, obviously, but if you have to um, travel or you, you want to go to the office, being somewhere in, in proximity to where you live is not a bad thing. The other thing is to um, the diversified housing stock has a reciprocal effect for our, um, our potential um, new businesses that come. When you talk to people who are opening businesses in our area, some of them are indicating that it's hard to find um, people to work at this job or that job, or um, you bump into people you know at Tim Hortons because they're dropping their grandkids off to work at Tim Hortons. We need to have communities that have diversified um, housing because we want to make sure that not only people can work, live and play, but they should also be able to stay. Um, increasingly I've heard from seniors who would like to stay in the community are not wanting to stay um, in a single family home with a large lot at this point. They want to also be able to travel at some point down the line and having an opportunity to live in a apartment building or a higher intensity area where they can turn the key and walk away and not worry about grass and things like that is important to them. I've also heard from people who are seniors who want their children to be, have, to be able to or have an opportunity to move back to the area in which they grew up. And a lot of those people come with um, various skills, interests, um, business ideas. I think this is a virtuous cycle. Uh, we need to make sure that we can attract all kinds of people to our community. And then we have opportunities for employers, for employment. And um, as I say, we can then make sure that we are providing services. We have recreational opportunities. 
um, it's the same. It's a virtuous cycle, and and um, the good is building on the good, and and makes a, a place that people can call a community, and um, create their lives around being there. So, um, I would therefore also then moving down uh, south a bit to Delaware. The 402-401 corridor isn't just touching Kamoka Kilworth, it touches Delaware. And this is the golden egg. Um, being close to, um, Toronto, uh, on a highway that goes to Toronto, to Detroit, to um, Windsor, uh, to Sarnia, these connections are important and you've seen this happen in other communities. Um, having a diversified tax base is also really good for our community. We are overly dependent on um, residential lands and having properties that are paying commercial rates, providing opportunities for um, employment, all of that, again, is that sort of argument about virtuous cycle. Uh, we need to make sure that we're not focusing only on one area and we have been ignoring um, uh, Delaware. I came on council in 2010 and there was discussion about Delaware and, and obviously as Councillor Scott pointed out, the discussions had been ongoing prior to that. It is time to make sure we leverage those opportunities and make sure that our community can benefit from all of the um, pieces lining up and making sure that we have the equations helping our infrastructure, helping our residents have employment, uh, diversifying tax base and, and being able to build out what we need to build out to support all of that. So I think these comments are really um, great. I I think you've touched on everything. Well, the only thing that occurred to me is that um, I did also want to support the comments that I heard about the employment lands that are at Amiens and Glendon. Uh, those are de designated as urban employment. I think they should be. Um, I'd be open. That might not be as an industrial or uh, uh, an area as some of the um, properties that are right on the highway near Delaware, for example. But um, we've, we've got a lot of small business people who are trying to find places to land in our community. We've had those items come before us um, in council saying, where can I go? Something like the uh, project that was done near the 401 and Dorchester, where people build homes and have um, businesses attached to their homes. Maybe that is something that is a kind of a cool transitional idea that we want to see in that Amiens Glendon area. I don't know what the solution is there, but those lands are um, also unique right near the highway, would not require heavy trucks and things to travel through the areas that are commercial or our village or our um, residential areas. So to me, it makes perfect sense to uh, focus on that area too and see what can happen there. So um, unless somebody has something else, I know I've been jumping around a bit here, I'm trying to pull it all together, but um, if there's anything I've overlooked in highlighting or any other questions, thoughts that have occurred since we started at the beginning here, I don't see any hands. Um, in that case, um, if there is nothing in, in addition, we have a recommendation before us, a motion, um, and it is that report CAO number one, 2022 uh, for the Municipality of Middlesex Center official plan status update be received and that council direct WSP to complete the comprehensive official um, plan review. Could I have a mover please and a seconder? I have Councillor Scott and Councillor Cates. Uh, uh, any opposed to that? I don't see anyone. Uh, that is carried. Thank you for all of the um, efforts and um, thoughts and uh, considerations from Council and all the input and um, support that we've had from staff. Uh, we've had lots and lots of questions and, and clarifications required as we've gone through it. It's been a long process, so I'm looking forward to seeing the final document um, as soon as possible, I guess that's the best way to put it. Thank you, everyone. And we'll move now to 7.2, which is the application for official plan amendment uh, for the property at 22447 uh, Kamoka Road. Marion Cabrell, our planner, is going to provide an overview. And she is joining us, I've been informed. So there she is now. Good morning, Marion. Happy New Year to you, too. Uh, happy New Year to you and to the rest of Council. And uh, thank you for 
introducing this item. Uh, so the purpose of this report is to provide a recommendation to council regarding an official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment applications for the property at 22447 Kamoka Road in the Kamoka area. And I will just bring up um, location map for everyone to view. Okay, so uh, this application was before council uh, previously at a public meeting in 2019, as well as October 2021. The purpose and effect of the requested official plan amendment and rezoning applications are to redesignate the land to a medium density residential designation and rezone uh, to a urban residential third density zone to permit the development of two five-story buildings with 152 units. Uh, the lands are approximately 14.6 acres in area and have fronted only on Kamoka Road. The lands are surrounded by residential and agricultural lands and ponds to the south, residential lands to the west, as well as commercial lands to the north. Uh, so the lands are in proximity to the southern boundary of the settlement area of Kamoka and currently designated parks and recreation and zoned restricted agriculture. The applicant has only provided a conceptual site plan, which I'll just switch to right now for everyone to view. Um, and uh, as we can see, this is conceptual in nature. It is subject to change. Um, the applicant is proposing a single access onto Kamoka Road, as well as the two apartment buildings, which would be oriented towards the ponds um, on the south side of the property. Uh, they are proposing surface parking, which would be located on the north side of the development. But again, this is subject to change. And uh, to date, we have not received a site plan application related to this development. Uh, the proposal is um, or will be on full municipal services, um, as well as stormwater management plans. We'll also see use of that existing pond to the south of uh, development. Um, and I, again, I will note that additional details related to the development or any other matters such as engineering matters would be reviewed through the site plan approval process. And again, this has not been applied for by the, uh, by the app. Uh, generally, there is support in the PPS, the County Official Plan and Middlesex Center's Official Plan for the increase uh, for housing availability, as well as intensification within urban areas, especially where there is servicing and there's proximity to open areas, commercial um, areas as well, and of course, servicing. Uh, from the public meeting in 2019 and in 2021, comments from the public as well as council and other stakeholders were received and they are included within the report. So I will just provide a very high level overview um, of those comments. Uh, generally, there were concerns about the compatibility between the buildings as well as the surrounding low density development, um, concerns about height and privacy, uh, the necessity for additional development and higher density development uh, within Kamoka and Kilworth especially, uh, the density of the proposed development, uh, the access to the commercial lands in the north, the usage of the lands by surrounding landowners for stormwater management, uh, the loss of parkland, increased traffic at Glendon Drive and Kamok Road, and then the impact on the wellness center uh, located just to the east of these lands. Um, the UTRCA uh, did provide comments in 2019. Overall, they don't have concerns with the proposed amendments. However, they do have concerns with the site servicing strategy, and we'll seek confirmation um, uh, with regard to the setback from the pond and the proposed development. And again, that would be addressed through site plan control. Additionally, county and municipal staff review the applications and will provide more detailed comments and analysis through that site plan approval process. Uh, and this includes engineering matters, uh, impacts on Kamoka Road and Legend Drive, as well as emergency services and access to the buildings. Uh, so as mentioned, the purpose of this report was to provide feedback, sorry, provide recommendation to council based on some of the feedback we have heard uh, regarding these applications, uh, regarding the applications to permit the residential development. So first, uh, staff did consider the appropriateness of the redesignation from parks and recreation to other uses and found that the private lands were designated as parks and recreation uh, during the last official plan review. Um, and it's suspected that, that they are um, designated as such because they are remnants of aggregate extraction and contain the ponds and uh, not suitable for development, or at least that's what was considered. Um, but it was not considered part of any municipal plan for open space or parks, um, nor was it to be used by the owner of the lands for any private clubs or recreational uses, such as a golf course or a driving range. 
uh, further the lands are, are, are currently used by neighboring properties to the north and to the west for drainage. And the parks and recreation designation is more appropriately applied to the pond uh, where it is used at that, as that type of stormwater facility. Uh, so staff are of the opinion that the subject land will not provide or act as that key linkage for municipal parks or open spaces. And it is not the intention for the landowner to develop the land for private recreational uses. Um, as such, staff are of the opinion that the larger pond used as a stormwater facility would be appropriate to remain as is, but the balance of the land or the northern portion of the land would be appropriate for urban development. Um, sorry, based on that, um, staff subsequently looked at the draft uh, growth management study that was completed last year in association with the official plan review. Um, and this was completed by Watson and Associates where they did determine that, um, that or sorry, where they did determine what would be most appropriate um, in terms of adding additional growth for the Kamoka and Kilworth area, since this area would be the focus for municipalities growth over the planning horizon. Uh, the growth management study did indicate that there was a shortfall for medium and higher density residential development and to accommodate it through intensification and development um, on existing lands within the uh, settlement areas without expansion. And this is especially um, to note because there are full municipal services available and it is in proximity to major transportation corridors as well as other amenities. Um, as such, staff are satisfied that the requested amendment to redesignate the lands from parks and recreation to a medium density residential designation can be supported uh, specifically for the developable area or the northern portion of the lands based upon all the current information that is available to us. Uh, when reviewing the appropriateness of the zoning bylaw amendment, staff considered that comments um, made by the public, stakeholders, and council when uh, uh, to ensure that uh, any impacts would be mitigated from the development to any existing land uses. Uh, so again, the one of the primary concerns was the height of the proposed buildings and the setback from the existing low density development located to the west of the, the lands. Um, staff recommend a maximum height of four stories, but an increased setback of 15 meters from the Western property line. And this is again, to mitigate impacts from that neighboring low density development. Uh, while staff do recommend a maximum height for the buildings, but we also support an increased maximum density to accommodate the similar amount of units on the site. So this would result in a slightly larger footprint for the buildings um, in order to accommodate uh, the full amount of units that were originally proposed. Um, additionally, uh, the proposed development will need to comply with the zoning bylaws parking rate for apartment buildings. However, the zoning bylaw is silent on visitor parking rates. So as such, uh, staff recommend a minimum parking rate for visitors of 0.1 parking spaces per unit. And this is similar to other medium and higher density developments in other jurisdictions, including the city of London. Um, and finally, staff also proposed holding symbols uh, of our applied to land to ensure orderly development. Uh, we are proposing um, H2, which would require a site plan agreement, um, H6, which would require a public site plan review, as well as H7 to require an urban design brief uh, to be prepared by the applicant in accordance with the multiple dwelling policies of the official plan. Um, so as a result of the aforementioned, uh, staff recommend approval of a revised official plan amendment and revised zoning bylaw amendment to consider the site-specific provisions for the development. Um, planning staff determined that this is consistent with the PPS, the county official plan, and Middlesex Center official plan, as well as the zoning bylaw. And I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Okay, I've just concerned confirm that um, we'll see um, Rick first. And uh, this is Rick Knudsen, he's the applicant and he has registered to speak. So um, we're just waiting for him to come on. There he is. There, I've unmuted myself. Good morning, um, Mr. Knudsen. Um, the floor is yours. Good yes, morning, if you need to make your presentation. Thank you. I'm going to be very brief. <clears throat> I've reviewed uh, Marion's report uh, with her prior to the meeting today, and uh, we can accept the recommendation. And I'm going to see.
suggest that the uh, that we also consider going back to the five story uh, for something that Marion just um, brought to your attention, and that is the fact that uh, the um, the four story building takes up a larger footprint. So five stories would be twenty to twenty five percent. Uh, less impactful in terms of the area of the site. So therefore the ability to create better view planes for the residents uh, happens through the five story as opposed to the four story. Uh, we're happy with the, uh, the density or the total unit change and the, the uh, land area limits. Uh, that provides us with, I believe 140 units as opposed to the 152, which is in the original application. Other than that, your worship, uh, I'm in your hands. Um, there are a couple little tiny issues. Uh, spelling last name uh, got juxtaposed a little bit. It's K-N-U-T-S-O-N. And the clerk, I'm in your hands. Okay, thank you. And the clerk has noted that. All righty, uh, thank you for your presentation. And then we also have uh, Matt Campbell who's registered to speak as well. There we go. Uh, thank you, Mayor David. Uh, can you hear me okay? We can, the Wonderful. floor is yours. Thank you very much. I, I have Jim Graham with me as well. I just wanna make sure that he's gonna be able to speak uh, after I speak. Um, we have some overlapping points we'd like to bring up. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to speak here. I am cognizant of the fact that there was a specific request mm -hmm. from council to provide new information and not rehashing information that we have already provided, which Marion has acknowledged in, uh, in her report, which uh, I, I am thankful for that. There's a few points that I would like to bring up that can be considered new information here uh, and specifically relate to the staff report that's been provided. Um, before I get to those three key points I'd like to discuss, however, there was just one point that was made uh, just in uh, Marion's presentation that spoke to uh, the land to be used for a seniors building. Just, I know the council already knows this, I just want to reiterate the fact that um, there's no ability for the municipality to control the age of anyone who's going to be occupying that building if it is defined under the zoning bylaw as an apartment building. As, as council is well aware, uh, the only way to restrict a certain demographic occupying a building is if it uh, is a building that cares for uh, seniors as part of a continuum of care facility or nursing home or, um, or a, a, a healthcare building um, of that nature. Uh, just a point of clarification. Um, so in, in regards to this uh, application, this is, it's, it's certainly an interesting one uh, in light of the OP update that uh, Middlesex Center is undergoing right now. And the, one of the points that, that we made was that uh, the growth management study that has recently been prepared did not recommend for any additional lands to be redesignated in Kamoka Kilworth to account for any residential growth. Now, the point was made that um, certain sites can accommodate infill and intensification. The clarifying point here is that the report did not consider nor makes any mention of the redesignation of individual sites. However, the report makes mention of existing residentially designated sites and vacant residential sites for future infill and intensification, which I think we can all agree that's an appropriate and good thing to do. I wanna be clear that the OP update and growth management study did not recommend in the short term that any new land in Kamoka Kilworth be re redesignated. So I ask council to consider why look at undermining the structure of the land use plan that has been established for Kamoka Kilworth to redesignate lands that have just recently been considered not warranted for residential needs. The, you know, the, the broader question is there are, the, the report desig or denotes that there is sufficient land in Kamoka Kilworth. So why are we then um, 
you know, kind of ruffling the feathers of all the residents in the area and undermining the established land use structure in Kamoka Kilworth. Which leads me to uh, my second point, that the evaluation metrics uh, that have been uh, uh, analyzed in the staff report, uh, we don't believe those are um, equi equitably um, put forward. And what I mean is that uh, the site in question here is being considered for uh, medium to high density. Um, and one of the points is that it's proximate to the recreation center. By that evaluation metric, every single property within Kamoka Kilworth is proximate to the, the recreation center. In our initial submissions, we made the point that there is sufficient land in and around the recreation center area for medium and high density uh, development. And that perhaps redesignation of lands that abut recently constructed low density uses may not be appropriate for that. And it can in fact undermine the planned function of lands that are abut or adjacent to the recreation center. One of the points was that um, it's proximate to the recreation center, which would infer that residents could use active transportation, whether walking, cycling, those things, to get to the rec center. Well, given the existing situation that we have on area roads, that's not a reality. Uh, residents of this proposed building will not be walking to the rec center, nor will it really have any meaningful day-to-day -day impact. And I don't believe that's within the planned function of the rec center area and the new um, uh, uh, village core that is uh, put forward in the OP. Um, my, my final point here for council's consideration is that if council chooses to redesignate these lands, we can expect that this will set an expectation throughout the municipality that the evaluation criteria for medium and high density residential developments is, has been fundamentally changed in that no longer do sites have to be reasonably proximate to, uh, to a village center or village core or the rec center. And what I mean is that because of the location of this property and its land use context, it sets the expectation that other sites with similar attributes could be considered for medium and high density residential uses in the future. And you know, as a land use planner and consultant, we, we look at these sites all the time. And I'm not saying this as a warning, but perhaps a, a, a caution to council to say, if this goes forward, you can expect a flood of additional applications. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it depends on how, how council wants to treat this. Um, I'm just urging caution uh, in, this, uh, in this particular um, decision. Again, I'd just like to reiterate the, the fact that we have a growth management study that doesn't recommend any additional land uh, that be added. So again, questioning what is the appropriateness of this specific request. You know, certainly we have concerns about compatibility of land use. And I think Marianne's already mentioned the fact that perhaps the five-story buildings may not be uh, the appropriate use on this site. And I certainly echo those comments. Um, my comments are, are more related to a more fundamental uh, land use planning issue uh, for the reasons that I've, I've previously noted. Um, I'd like to uh, offer the rest of my time to uh, Jim Graham. Who could uh, who could speak, and we're certainly available to answer uh, any questions that council may have. And we certainly thank you for your time.
Oh, sorry. Sorry, we were trying to find Mr. Graham and he's not um, he's not on the line. So um, we had less than a minute left anyways. So let's move on to council then. Is there anyone who wants to jump in and comment on anything they've heard um, from either of the uh, presenters? Councillor Cates and then Councillor Scott. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, I have a real variety of things that I wanna say here. So first of all, to address uh, uh, Mr. Newson on the five story. Um, you know, Marion's report suggests a four story. Um, I, and I think uh, lots of other council, when we talked about this before, were really hoping for a three story. So we were hoping for three, you want five, Marion said four. I think that it's quite a nice, happy medium. So I just wanted to add that point. Um, to speak to, uh, um, Matt Campbell's, uh, um, just to add to a couple of your comments. So to talk about it being near the rec center, um, I understand what you're saying, but you need to remember if you were listening to our previous item here talking about the official plan, we've all just discussed the changes or additions we'd like to see and perhaps the numbers are too low. Um, I think in Kamoka Kilworth with the uh, intensification uh, and growth that we uh, are expected to see here that things just aren't going to be that close to the wellness center. <laughs> like, let's be real about that. And as far as the walking, you know, there is the uh, PA study from Middlesex County for the widening sidewalks, uh, bike paths, et cetera, for, for Glendon. So I do think that some of those things, uh, it'll all fit together. Um, um, and as far as the flood of applications, well, again, with the growth that's expected here, I'm sure that we're gonna see lots. Um, but to, with the thoughts on the medium and high density, this is one of the things which I also just brought up when we talked about the official plan. Um, I would like to see some, in general, some very specific uh, definitions, if you will, for the, low, medium, and high density. We have, Marion has this as medium density, saying uh, apartment, multiple dwelling, street townhouse, townhouse. So I'm curious what is low density, what is medium, and what is high? Uh, you know, four-story, two four-story apartment buildings, I'm sure are gonna be the first of its kind in uh, Middlesex Center. And so I think that we need to be very specific on four-story buildings, but it's called medium density. So uh, I, I, I think it's a bit of a cautionary area there. Um, um, I thought that the report, Marion's report was good and showed uh, um, lots of details on things. I'm glad, you know, it's nice to see that the site plan uh, would come back to council and public review and the hold symbols. Um, I really agree that, uh, you know, I really have my doubts and it's kind of becoming now a pet peeve of mine for people to say senior, 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 seniors. And it's like now that's just a buzzword. And, uh, you know, the jury's still out on some of these senior, senior, senior places. Is that really what there's going to be? And there's there's not going to be any holding anybody's feet to the fire on when it's not a uh, seniors because it's, uh, as Matt said, it's not part of the whole uh, you know, ability to do that. Um, again, I, I uh, like the greater setbacks that Marion has come up with. Um, and, okay, I've already said that. So now, um, density, um, and, you know, again, Briefly, I mentioned the park overlay uh, in the last, in our last, so these two things needed to be opposite on our agenda. Uh, I mentioned the overlay of parks in some of these uh, 
few places where there's maybe already some red residential or um, so now having said all that, um, you know, unfortunate Mr. Graham couldn't um, um, come online, but I did have a conversation with him yesterday, uh, as I had have in the past when this is, uh, item has come to agenda to the agenda. And I just want to point out, this is where my giant butt comes from um, on, you know, great report, all the details, but I can't support this uh, until we have a master servicing plan. Um, you know, uh, six years ago, Mr. Graham enlightened me, which I, I did sort of already know, uh, six years ago, this whole entire piece of property was had six feet of water in it. And uh, now we have the Bella Lago and, uh, you know, the condos and Tim Hortons. We have all of those things draining into here. Um, and uh, the berm, Mr. Graham agreed to open his berm. You know, uh, previous staff asked for, for some help in this uh, until the plan could be done. He opened up the berm, which now drains into his pond and then goes on to the Johnson pit. Um, and so here we are six years later. And with this added, uh, you know, added drainage coming, um, he has grave concerns that this year he's, he, he could have basement flooding going on because of what's draining from his house to there. Um, you know, and I, you can't help but when you when you think about these drainage things, this has always been when I drive by there, this has always been something that I've thought of is, man, is this an opportunity for this place to just flood out? When we see the record rainfalls we're having around the world and we see, you know, all, all that's happened in BC and all different places, it's like, you know, I think that we have to say stop here. And I think that we need to um, ha defer this until we can have a master servicing plan in place to know that things are properly taken care of and everybody isn't just relying on a berm being opened or not opened. And, you know, if this drainage then goes into the Johnson pit and their work, it, like this could be a really, um, a really big mess. Um, I think that that is all of the concerns that I wanted to express. Thank you. All right. Um, I understand our public works and engineering um, director is available. Um, if here he comes. No. Is Rob? Yeah, Rob's coming. Okay. There you are. Good morning, Rob. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to um, the last point that was made relative to where we are in the process and its impact on the, the request for a zoning bylaw amendment. Um, sure. So through Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll give it a try and certainly accept any follow-up questions. Um, so the, the zoning bylaw amendment does not mean that they can go in and and build tomorrow, right? That's successful. There's obviously there's still going to be design uh, work to do, and they will have to prepare a stormwater um, management strategy for the site and look at downstream impacts. So, you know, so by by no means does this give them approval to proceed with the development. It's just a, it is a step forward in that direction. Uh, there's a lot of history on this site with the with the stormwater from the other properties uh, that outlet through easements on this property into the pond and then go downstream. Uh, we've obviously had communications with the Ministry of the Environment and Ministry of Natural Resources regarding the stormwater um, community master plan and, and municipalities plans for that pond as well. Uh, that's still a, a work in progress. Um, that once we achieve or if we achieve what, what our ultimate goals are, obviously it, it will make that easier to for them to facilitate the stormwater on their site. But you know there may be ways in which they can manage it uh, in lieu of us moving forward. So it's it's certainly still on the developer their responsibility to come up with a stormwater strategy that is is functional and will not impact downstream uh, properties. 
Um, I recognize that the, there, there is concerns from the adjacent landowner and there's some history here as to what happened with approvals and the berm being built um, and reopened. And um, I'm not sure how much of that you would like me to get into, but uh, I'm cer certainly happy to answer what questions I can. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone who wants any clarity from um, the Director of Public Works Engineering at this point? Okay, thank you, Rob, for that um, um, explanation of process. Um, you're here if, if anything else comes up. So um, I was told that Mr. Graham is available now on, on yes, he is still available. And um, where is he? There he is. Okay, I was informed that um, the time that is left in the, uh, pre um, with respect to your presentation is two minutes. So take it away. <laughs> Madam Mayor, members of council and staff. Um, yeah, I'll be very brief. Five years ago, Rewind the Watch, that site was filled with over 10 feet of water higher than it was today. It was, it was backing up into the stormwater system into Bella Lago and the commercial plaza. The township engineer at the time said to me, we have no, the engineering reports from the developer that said evaporation and percolation into a private stormwater pond, which is where this applicant's site is, was going to manage the stormwater, but it doesn't. Can you open up the berm? We have to do a regional stormwater uh, uh, plan. The berm was opened, I graciously did that. My water level has been rising year after year. I can't see how we would go forward with any application that would increase stormwater when we already know it can't be managed in that particular pond. We don't know whether the regional stormwater management plan is going to use that particular site. Uh, Mr. Cascaden just said there's still discussion with the Ministry of the Environment. They're trying to figure it out. Uh, in the meantime, if I plug that pond tomorrow, the entire site would be filled with water and it would be backing up onto Glendon Drive. I urge you not to consider any development on that site until either a regional stormwater management plans in place or the developer has proven, and I get to peer review, so this doesn't happen again, that percolation or evaporation or however they're gonna manage it in their private stormwater pond. And that's why it was zoned parks and recreation because it was supposed to be a private stormwater pond that didn't work. But I urge you that until I can do a peer review of that, and we then look at the density on the site to make sure that it can be managed by them or as part of a regional stormwater pond takes place. I don't think anybody wants to look at the liability of Middlesex Center, to the developer, to anybody upstream that's draining into that pond right now that can't be managed in that pond, is now draining into my pond, is draining into Johnson's. We're having unprecedented water levels. And does mitigation to stop my basement from flooding this year is that, a, is that a municipal responsibility? Is it the developer's responsibility? Uh, I just think, uh, you know, I know it's considered that this could be a regional part of a regional stormwater pond and whether this situation may be a trade for the water in the pond by the municipality for a different, for developmental or an afterthought development on the site. Regardless, I implore that nothing happens until we know how that water is going to work if it is part of a regional stormwater pond, how it's going to work and the density that it may accommodate. If it's not part of a regional stormwater pond, how they're going to manage their stormwater so it's not flooding downstream folks. And uh, I have it in writing from the, uh, from the engineer at the time. Please open that burn because we are going to be back. We are going to be flooded out in Bella Lago and all the infrastructure. I know I'm starting to push my two minutes, but I urge you to get this Get the engineering done. Don't let it happen ad hoc as it's happened in the past, threatening my property and don't even consider densification of the site until you know how the stormwater can be accommodated. Thank you. Thank and you. Okay, um, councillors, questions, comments? Councillor Scott. Yes, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I can, will echo, uh, Councillor Cates and, uh, some of her comments there for sure. When I first seen this on the agenda, my first initial thought was, you know, we're seven, one was about finalizing the OP and seven, two is about doing an amendment to it. 
Uh, and, you know, like I said, the, the comments that uh, Mr. Campbell made said that it wasn't in there originally. So I started thinking to myself, well, why was that not considered by our consultants? I guess it's not too late. Uh, but I would say that uh, we are way too premature on this personally. And, and I'm of the opinion also that um, for all of Middlesex Center, uh, you know, the three-story apartment buildings are, would be kind of the maximum I'd like to see only to keep it a rural community. You know, we can leave the towers for the city of London or uh, whoever else wants to do them. So anyway, I won't carry on uh, too long other than to say that uh, I, I'm not in favor of this uh, at this time. And if the site is, uh, you know, in the future, the consultants look at it and say it is considered, you know, low density, a continuation of Bell Largo might be a better choice there anyway. Uh, but again, I don't think it would be my first choice at this point. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else? Councillor Heffernan? Okay, through, through the mayor. Um, okay, so uh, actually, um, I, I do echo the concerns because one of my questions was going to be, um, how close is the pond on this property to the pond on the abutting property, which would be Graham's? And it looks like on the, the location map, they're fairly close. And so I'm just concerned about already before I heard these comments about the flow into there. Um, and I don't think it's fair to Mr. Graham to have an easement across one property to his, unless it's a municipal easement. And at this time, we don't know that. Um, I'm also in disagreement with the, uh, even with the four, I would much rather have three. And if the four, um, four floors are going to be expanded out, then we're going to be covering more property as well, which again means more um, more pavement. And again, climate change is is here to stay. And I think with all that pavement to for 160 vehicles or whatever, and the, the expanded footprint of the building, um, and the already concerns with the um, with the water, I I can't support it either. Uh, if I could remind Council, this is an application for a zoning bylaw amendment and um, the details uh, as, they are, as they relate to the structure or the location of, you know, bigger or smaller footprints and so on and so forth um, is as the uh, planner identified part of the um, discussion that happens in, uh, this is a conceptual plan and a zoning change not a site plan application or a discussion of all of the details that um, are, that we're kind of focusing on right now. So the question is right now, is the uh, official plan to be amended to allow that process to continue in terms of how high, how broad a footprint, uh, what angles, what setbacks, how many parking spots and all the other things. Um, is there any, oh yes, Councillor Cates. Uh, good point, except that I was under the impression that the UR3-18, the dash 18 was very site specific, just to add to that. Okay. All right. I'll turn to the pro, um, the planner. Can you, can you, I'm trying to explain this in probably language that is more precisely um, articulated by yourself, Marion. Is there any, is that, can you explain maybe more clearly than I am doing? Sure, uh, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, to Council. So uh, essentially the official plan amendment and the zoning bylaw amendment is creating a building envelope to show what could go on the site. Um, but it doesn't necessarily need to max out all those setbacks or all the, the density or um, any of the other general provisions that are in that zoning bylaw amendment. So there is further study that will need to be required. Um, for example, if we determine through the engineering um, 
uh, reports or the studies that are completed by the applicant that uh, uh, two five-story buildings would not be appropriate on the site and instead one would be appropriate then that is something that would be able to be supported within the zoning framework so again it doesn't need to it doesn't mean that we are approving those um, the development as proposed right now there's still additional study that would need to be reviewed and then that would uh, refine uh, the development proposal before it is approved or um, actual um, shovels in the ground construction. Uh, thank you for that. I was just going to make a, an additional comment here. There are questions and, and these are valid questions and so forth. If, if I get a feeling from at least some of you that there's an idea that you'd like to defer, that is the motion that we can make to defer. Um, the clerk would need to know um, deferred until when. So a timeline here, if you'd like to, if that's the way you'd like to go to get more clarity around some of the concerns that you have, defer until would be um, something that could be considered. I did see a hand though. Uh, Councillor Scott, did you want to jump in and make a comment here? Yes, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, what I'm thinking because I do understand that none of this is going to happen, shovels in the ground, but I'm still questioning why we're actually going to redesignate it from uh, parks uh, to, to high density at this time. So I, I think it's premature and I think the stormwater issues, we should have that all done before we redesignate. And the fact that we got an open, an open OP plan, there's maybe still an opportunity to take a look at that. So I would suggest maybe deferral would be the best at this time, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Arch, you had your hand up as well. Yeah, um, through you, Madam Mayor, the, the stormwater issue, until that's addressed properly, I, I will not change a bylaw or official plan amendment because we, we've done it before. We uh, create a situation where you've gone so far that you can't stop it. So yeah, until the stormwater issues are addressed. I don't know if that's a deferral or just turn this down because that, that'd be a long deferral. So that's up to council. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Arts. I think I'll ask the um, clerk to suggest some wording that would meet his needs and um, I um, include all the points that you've itemized in your comments. So if you would like to jump in. Okay. <laughs> Through the chair. Uh, should council wish to pursue with a deferral at this time, a motion can be tabled. It would need to be moved and seconded. Should council wish to defer the application and the motion that uh, is currently before you as a recommendation in the agenda package, we would need to choose a date for that deferral. That date can be pending the submission of further studies, um, should that be council's desire. Uh, for the conversation that's unfolding around the horseshoe at this time. So council would need to select a date for the deferral, but that can be contingent upon the pending submission of further studies. I uh, hope that is clear, clarifies things for the council. Thank you. Is it on? Okay. Oh, they're nodding. Okay. Um, so what is your wish? I don't. Councillor Kings. Uh, the wish is for Madam Mayor, all. Madam Mayor, if I may. Oh, um, okay. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor, and then Councillor Cates, if you want to make a motion or suggest, go ahead. Councillor, I mean Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I was just I was just going to suggest uh, that uh, I, I think the the flavor is to defer this until such time that we have the stormwater management um, report finalized and then we can go from there. So that would be my motion at this time. Okay, is there anything you'd like to add Councillor Case to that motion? Is that wording? I would, I would, yes, yes, that's what I'm thinking too. Okay. I don't know the specific word that I need to say. I was going to say all of what James said sounds good, um, but I don't know if the right thing defer until 
you know, master servicing plan or stormwater plan. That's the part that I don't know. And if we need to get Rob to fill that in, but I like what Deputy Mayor said. So I'll second it. Thank you. Okay, so the Deputy Mayor has suggested that this is um, deferred. Oops, am I muted still? No. I just got it. Okay, sorry, I had a message saying I was muted. Um, Deputy Mayor Brennan has made a motion that this item be deferred until such time as we have a stormwater management um, report. And then, um, Councillor Cates, would that be, uh, can you second that then? Yes. And I think the clerk's making notes. Anything else you need in there then? So we need to put a date provided the plan has been submitted by that date. So for okay, so we should ask. Meeting. Okay, if I say the March meeting, um, does staff would would it's Rob jump in? Okay, um, unless the um, director of public works and engineering jumps in, if we said March sixteenth is a meeting, is does that give enough time for that work to be done? Or does Michael want to jump in? Rob's coming. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just to provide some clarity to the council, I think we're on the right track. Maybe not get so hold up, held up on a date for deferral, even though we should have something, but it's contingent upon satisfactory review of the stormwater master plan, as the clerk noted. So I think that should be satisfactory as we don't have a definitive time at which time we could ascertain to when that report would be brought back. Um, so we have an understanding that we will look at this, work with the applicant, and bring that back as best as we can. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, um, I'll, I'll call the I'll call a vote. Um, anyone opposed to the motion as um, itemized by uh, Deputy Mayor Brennan, seconded by Councillor Cates? And that is carried. Then we will we will take we will take this up again when we have the proper um, reports and take it from there. Then, okay. Uh, thank you, Council. And now we can move to item. There are no notices of motion, so item nine is correspondence. There are four items. Is there anything there uh, anyone wishes to comment on or bring attention to? Uh, not seeing any hands, then the motion before us is that the Council for Municipality of Middlesex Centre receives the correspondence items 9.1 through 9.4 as information. And a mover. Uh, Councillor Heffernan, Councillor Shipley, all in favour? Okay, and oh, sorry, I should have said any opposed. Thank you very much. I saw your hands. Um, I'll turn now to the deputy mayor to provide a, he's laughing because our warden had a problem with that yesterday. Um, so if you'd like to bring us up to speed on the county council. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I brought a uh, notice of motion forward to county council regarding extending the uh, warden's term from two years, from one year. Uh, it sparked quite a conversation. Uh, it was a lengthy conversation. And in the end, it was referred back to staff uh, to see what uh, uh, bylaws and, and um, uh, things like that with the ministry would have to be done if, that, if it is voted on. So there was no vote taken on to approve or disapprove it, but it's gone back to staff and will be coming back to council at, at a later date. Um, I see uh, later in our agenda, there's a, a, a referral to uh, by the, um, the works, the public works uh, for pickup trucks uh, to be purchased. Uh, we had one at the county where they sent out a, 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 a tender for a pickup truck for the county for a foreman's truck. They got nothing back from the tenders uh, simply because these trucks are not available. Now they did manage to find one at Oxford Dodge at um, 50,000 that met the specs. So that was approved, but um, just uh, it's extremely difficult to get these pickup trucks right now because they're just not available. Uh, 
Another level of uh, modernization projects is going on. Uh, $500,000 has been received uh, for uh, some different, uh, to hire a company to uh, 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 further, or further the uh, modernization plan at the county level. Councillor Elliott, Deputy Mayor Elliott from Thames Center brought a motion forward <clears throat> to support two reps for the Thames Valley District School Board. Uh, Middlesex uh, County has two, uh, Oxford County has two, and uh, Elgin County has two representative, representatives on the uh, Thames Valley District School Board as the city has six reps. So it balances it out. Because of our population, um, technically, I guess we're only allowed to have one, but uh, we have received two in the past. So we did make a recommendation and send it to the Thames Valley District School Board that we would like and, and feel we deserve two representatives on the school board. So that was um, sent off uh, to the Thames Valley District School Board. Uh, new stoplights were uh, passed to go into the budget for 2022 at the county level for Illerton Road and Wonderland Road. Uh, so that uh, was is gonna be put into the budget for this year. <clears throat> Adelaide Street and Illerton Road uh, did not meet the criteria for stoplights, so that one was not brought forward. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a large social housing gap uh, going on right now. They, they, they just can't keep up, and it's getting larger, but there is going to be a report bought back to council, county council in the future to try to uh, see what's going on and how we can uh, lower that gap that uh, seems to be increasing at a rapid rate. So those are the main highlights, Madam Mayor, and I turn it back to you. Uh, thank you for that, Deputy Mayor. And um, I should just note that uh, the letter that was um, presented by Councillor um, Elliott at County, um, I'm going to be forwarding that to our staff so that our council can um, also support that motion to make sure that our our rural municipalities are represented more adequately with the two uh, reps. So um, thank you for that. Any questions for the deputy? Okay, seeing none then, um, the next item is um, uh, that we move into closed session. So I would look for a mover and seconder that the council for the municipality of Middlesex Centre adjourn to closed session at 11.57 pursuant to section 239 uh, number two of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended to discuss the following items. Um, under section B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. And under section C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. Uh, a mover, please, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Scott and Councillor Cates, uh, any opposed? Seeing none, uh, we are going to uh, wait for the live stream recording to stop and